In my first example, I'm going to use 354 divided by 6. Now, to find the number of 6s in 354 using the partial quotients method, first thing, the first thing you need to do is find all the partial quotients. Then you will record them in a column to the right of the problem. Then you will add the partial quotients to find the quotient or find the final quotient or answer. So we can rewrite this problem as 354 divided by 6. And then beside your question, you're going to draw a column. The first thing you need to do is you need to figure out how many 6s are in 354. Now, what I like to do is I like to use numbers that I'm familiar with. Sometimes when you're using a large dividend, it becomes difficult to figure out how many of groups of the divisor are in the dividend. But in this question, I know that 6 times 50 is 300. So I will write 50 in the column to the right. 50 times 6 is equal to 300. So I can place 300 underneath 354. And then you subtract 300 from 354, which leaves you with 54. The next part of the question is, you need to ask yourself how many groups of 6 are in 54. Well, I know 6 or 9 times 6 is equal to 54. So I can put my 9 here underneath my 50. 54 under 54 is 0. And then you take your partial quotients and you add them together. 59. So your answer is 59. That's how you use partial quotients to solve a problem with a one-digit divisor. The second problem that I'm going to go over is when you have a two-digit divisor in a partial quotients question. So if my question was 621 divided by 27. Remember, this number is your dividend. And the 27 is your divisor. So we can rewrite this problem as 621 divided by 27. And then I'm going to draw a column to the right of my question. Now, this becomes a little more difficult because you have a two-digit divisor. It becomes more difficult because you're dealing with a number that is harder to work with. Now, I can always just multiply 27 times 10 which equals 270 and I could also and keep doing that until I get up to the dividend. However, that method takes a little bit of extra time. I know that 27 times 20 is equal to 540. 540 is less than my dividend. So I can write 20 here and I can write 540 here. And then same thing as before, your answer is 81. Sorry, your answer isn't 81. What's left over is 81. Now I need to figure out how many 27s there are in 81. I know that 27 times 3 is equal to 81. So I can place a 3 here in my partial quotients column and I can take 81 and subtract it from 81, and my answer is 23. Great, perfect. Now, what happens when you have a two-digit divisor and a four-digit number? That becomes even more difficult. It's difficult only in the sense that it's difficult to find a partial quotient that goes directly into the large number, but you can use the same method as before. You can use the power of 10. I know that 33 times 10 is 330, and I also know that 33 times 100 is 3,300. So I can go 33 times 100 equals 3,300 or 3,300. 
so I can put 100 here in my partial quotient. I'll subtract these two numbers. Now, I have 1,096 with 33. So now I can go 33 times 10, which has 330, 6, 6. 766. I can go 33 times 10 again. 330, 6, 3, 4. I can go 33 times 10 again. 330, 6, 0, 1. Now how many times does 33 go into 106? I know that 33 times 3 is 99. 33 times 3 is 99, and that leaves me with a remainder of 7, and if I add up my partial quotients, 100 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 3, 133. So my answer becomes 133 remainder 7. So you can always work with multiples of 10 to find your answer. If it ever becomes too difficult to manipulate or too difficult to find the product, you can always use a multiple of 10 to get you close to a number that you can work with with the divisor. Okay, so that is partial quotients with two digit divisors. And now for our final example, I'm going to do a word problem, a two step word problem. Ben is making math manipulatives to sell. He needs to make at least $450. So I'm going to underline that part because the question's asking me he needs to make at least $450, which means that he needs to profit is $450. Now profit is equal to what you can sell your product for minus the cost of production. So that means how much can I sell it for subtracted by how much it costs me to make it. In this, so the next part of the question says each manipulative costs $18 to make and he's selling them for $30 each. What is the minimum, minimum number he can sell to reach his goal? Well, he's selling it for 30, and the cost is 18, so that means the profit per manipulative is $12. Now, if he's making $12 and he needs to make at least $450, we can take the $12 as your divisor, and 450 as your dividend. So how many times, and then I'm going to use partial quotients because I enjoy using that to solve this problem. I know that 12 times 30 is equal to 360. So we can go 30 here. Or sorry, yes, 360, which leaves me with 90. How many 12s go into 90? Well, 12 times 7 is 84. So 12 times 7 is equal to 84. So 7. So the answer is 37 remainder 6. Now because there is a remainder and the question asks you how many does Ben need to sell, you, Ben actually needs to sell 38 because there's a remainder. So Ben needs to sell 38 manipulatives. earn 
a profit of four hundred and fifty dollars. And that class ends our review of division. I hope this video helps you with your preparation for your quiz, and good luck over the weekend. And I hope I I believe everybody will do very well. See you in class next week.